broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hello, and thank you for joining the call. We're going to get started about three minutes after the hour to allow everyone time to, to join in and, and see the full content of the presentation. So please, please sit tight. For those just joining, uh, we're waiting about three minutes after the hour before we start to allow everyone time to log in uh, to see the full content. We'll get started in about another minute or so. Hello and welcome to this training session on fan system wire to air efficiency. All participants will remain on mute throughout the call to avoid hearing background noise. I encourage you to submit any questions or comments that you have throughout the presentation in the Q&A panel. Uh, it should be on the right hand side of, of your uh, screen. Uh, we will have a separate Q&A session at the end, so I'll, I'll remind everyone at the end that uh, questions are certainly welcome. Also, a recording of today's session will be made available to you shortly after the, the training completes. And we're really excited to present this to you today, so thank you for taking time out of your busy schedules to join us. My name is Paul Bauck. I'm an engineering manager for applied equipment at Johnson Controls. Uh, also presenting with me today is Rajavel Balaguru, a senior mechanical engineer on the sound and vibration team, and Brandon Diaz, a senior mechanical engineer and our fan system subject matter expert. At Johnson Controls, we are committed to our mission of healthy people, healthy places, and healthy planet. Through our Open Blue platform, we seek to address each of these outcomes. Uh, this presentation will focus primarily on the healthy planet pillar, uh, shown there in green, uh, reducing carbon footprint, reducing emissions, and promoting sustainability. So at this time, I'll turn it over to Rajavel to get us started. Uh, and uh, again, thank you everyone for attending. Thanks, Paul. Thank you everyone for attending this particular presentation. So we uh, started this uh, study 
for two reasons. One of the first reason is, as we know, HVAC end users, the primary requirement is efficiency followed by cost, acoustics, reliability in that order. So, so we want to understand how to improve the, uh, understand the efficiency of different components, how to improve them so that our end users can get the efficient product. And if we also know that uh, higher efficiency means lower acoustic in the product. And second, second, we wanted to study this one is to meet our carbon footprint goal. As a JCI, we committed to have a zero uh, emission requirement in 2040. So to address that, we want to improve our product so that we can get the efficient product to the market. In that, today's agenda is we'll see, we're going to see what is the different components in the fan system, which is used in HVAC equipment. Then what is the efficiency impact on the cost? Then what are the key factors going to contribute towards the improving the efficiency? Then we'll follow by different metrics currently used by the regulatory agency, like AMCA, ASRE, HRI. And finally, we're going to wrap up with the two different motor system currently used in the HVAC, EC motors versus VST controller or direct drive uh, fan system. So this, this is our main focus of our study. So we want to understand different fan system in the equipment. So we are, we are showing here the typical fan system here, the belt driven fan system. This can be used for same for other fan system, applicable for other fan system as well. The main components are controller, motor, transmission components, fan or blower. The fan also has the uh, centrifugal or planum fan. Then we also have an impeller. So this is a typical system for any uh, HVAC equipment. So we, here we are defining two different uh, parameters. One is wire to air efficiency. Another one is output power. Wire to air efficiency is nothing but output power by the input power, straightforward definition. Output power is nothing but the requirement of like say CFM requirement for a given static pressure. So static pressure times CFM is the output power. Input power is the uh, electrical input given to the motor system. If you see the right hand side, you can see there are a lot of losses occurs in the system. It, it start with the controller, motor, transmission, fan or blower and impeller, all has losses in the particular fan system or any fan system used in HVAC equipment. So this slide shows uh, some of the uh, efficiency breakdown similar to the previous one. So we, if you have power, electrical power coming in, it goes through controller, which has five to 10 percentage losses in form of heat. Then after that, the power from the controller goes to the motor. Motor also has some losses around five to 15 percentage, depending upon operating range. And you hear also that losses will be in, in form of heat and noise. Then this particular uh, belt driven system, we have a belt loss and we have a bearing pulley loss in the form of heat or noise. Here, the noises will be around five to 10 percentage. We call it as a mechanical losses. Then the main losses occurs in the impeller or the blowers, the blower side of that. The blower impeller loss or aerodynamic loss will be in the form of like 25 percentage to 40 percentage. They are in, in form of heat or noise. So the power in, the power out is nothing but airflow times pressure. And if you move to a, a VST control direct drive efficiency breakdown, similar to the previous uh, slide, everything is applicable here, except there is a no transmission components like belt losses will not be there. But if you see that other losses will be there and then uh, losses same uh, order like controller will be five to 10 percentage. Here too, the main driver of the losses is the impeller. It will be in the form of 25 to 40 percentage range. 
And then new, newly, we have uh, ECM motors uh, used in the HVAC equipments last decade. So here it's a motorized impeller efficiency breakdown is given. Here too, the losses will be similar compared to the previous uh, drag drive motor system. So here also not, uh, losses occurs in the form of heat and noise for different components. So multiple losses still present for this particular motor system as well. So as you said, we want to understand what is the efficiency impact on the cost. When we started this study, we found that 45 percentage of all HVAC energy is consumed by motors in the world. In that, in a in a given uh, buildings, 46 percentage of total electricity is consumed by HVAC uh, applications. In that, 18 percentage of electricity consumed by motors used in fan applications. Some of the uh, Typical HVAC equipment which uses fan system or terminal devices in residential applications like VAV boxes, fan coil units, and commercial and industrial applications, air handler, it's a fan system is a primary uh, uh, um, component to move the air. Then we also have a packaged equipment, rooftop units, water source heat pumps, chillers also as one type of one or other type of fan systems. Now, if we combine that, we can see 8 to 15 percentage of all electricity consumed by fan motors. So that give, give us the incentive to improve the efficiency so that we can reduce the cost to the consumer and also reduce the carbon footprint to the uh, environment. Now, we, we try to put some number. Let's see what happens. Like, let's say what will happen if you improve at least 5 percentage. We can go higher. But we'll start with the five percentage improvement and what is that cost uh, uh, benefit associated with that. Here we are showing some typical uh, uh, hypothetical case. For example, uh, one one fan system which requires ten thousand CFM. Here it requires it it will take like nine nine point five four kilowatt to move ten thousand CFM. The energy cost from our national data shows that 10.42 cents per kilowatt hour. Then the kilo cost to operate per year for this particular fan is around 4,300. 4, now, if we improve 5 percentage, the, the improvement in the cost is 41,300. That's, that's the improvement we can able to get. The total savings per unit per annual is around 200 dollars for, for, for this particular fan system. The, if you convert the energy equivalent, that is 1.4 tons of CO2 emission reduction. Or in other words, that's 3,500 miles driven in a typical car, so we can able to save that much. This is for one uh, fan system per year. Now, any fan system in you know, HVAC equipment have a warranty period of at least 15 so 20 to 30 years time frame. So every year we can able to save this much for the whole total lifetimes of 30 years. Now this is now if you take into some applications, uh, for example, community college. Community college uh, uses, let us assume, one air handling unit with uh, 50,000 total CFM requirement. If you convert one by one, so we can able to see at least thousand dollars thousand hundred dollars total savings per year and for which is also equivalent to seven tons of co2 emission reduction to the environment or other words 800 gallons of gasoline uh, reduction of usage and for example another application take a large museum the large museum usually have requires like 170,000 cfm which requires like, let's say 15 air handler units to meet that requirement. Now the cost savings comes around 3,800 total savings per year. In other words, it's 25 tons of CO2 emission reduction or the whatever the savings we can be able to power five homes for one year. 
So this is a substantial savings if you able to improve the efficiency 5%. Now, whether we can able to improve 5% or we can go higher. So what are the, what are the components which contributes to improve our, our hindrance to the efficiency? So that's, that's our main focus of our study. So this study, uh, at the end of the study, we can able to see what are the key factors which, which will improve the wire to air efficiency or which are the things we have to focus on for us as a HVAC uh, manufacturer so that we can uh, meet the target of improving the efficiency. Our study uh, presented in the ASHRAE journal, December 2021 edition. The article link is given here. The, our conclusion of the study is basically fan selection combined with improving the system design best practices, which limited which limit the losses, will have a profound effect on the energy usage of the air system. That's the main conclusion of our paper. So how we arrived that conclusion. So we are going to show that why we arrived this conclusion. So in the study, for our study, we primarily focused on four types of fan system. The, the, the systems are given here. In the first two fan system, we change the motor, like we have used AC induction or direct drive uh, motor, fans, motor system, which has a VFD controller. But, and the fan system two, we have ECM technology, which has integrated controller. So our motor and controller is changing in the fan system one and two, but we, we kept the impeller or and blade shape constant, like airfoil blade, and also impeller size, we kept the same constant. So what will give us is for a given from blade design, what is the contribution of motor and the controller? Now fan system three and four, we did the same, but we switched up. Like for example, we kept the motor and controller constant, but we changed the impeller design here. Impeller size, we kept the same. So this should give us what is the design of improving or different design of impeller towards the wire to air efficiency. So, so this is what we tested. We didn't, we didn't use uh, our belt driven system, but our, uh, our conclusion is whatever we are going to conclude for this AC induction and ECM motors should be applicable for belt driven fan system too. Uh, as you said, the main focus of the study is wire to air efficiency. If you recall, a wire to air efficiency is nothing but power output by power in, power out is nothing but airflow, CFM requirement times given static or total pressure. Power in is electrical power, which we can also uh, define wire to air efficiency in another form, which is nothing but if you're able to understand, if you're able to know the controller, motor, transmission, and fan efficiency, if you multiply uh, all these four components, which also give us the wire to air efficiency. If any component is not present, for example, in this study, we didn't use transmission components like belt and pulleys. So this, this will be one number, uh, become one. So for, this, for, for our study, there is no transmission uh, efficiency. So what we tested here. So for our study, we carried out all our, our testing in AMCA certified, uh, AMCA aggregated 210 test chamber. So here we we collected, we measured the power across the controller by using power analyzer. That should give us the, the efficiency, the controller efficiency across here to be. Then we also measure the power across motor. So that give us the motor efficiency from B to C. Then we also measure the impeller efficiency that C2D, C2D basically we calculated actually, inferred from the calculated data. Then from A to D, that should give us the total wire to air efficiency. That's overall efficiency uh, we're trying to uh, uh, understand for this study. Now I'm 
we are presenting some data, our results. So this graph shows typical fan curve in x-axis, airflow is given, y-axis static pressure in terms of uh, inches of water column is given. So this is for one particular uh, constant speed line. That's a typical fan curve for any uh, HVAC system. And we also overlap the efficiency in this graph. If you recall, we are showing here fan system one and two. Fan system one here, the airfoil blade is same between one and two, but the motor and the controllers are different. Fan system one has an induction motor with VST controller. Fan system two has an EC motor with integrated controller. Now, if you see the data, the fan system one and fan system two fan curve for a given constant speed line, it's almost same. There is no uh, difference almost. We, can, we cannot able to distinguish large difference here. And if you see the wire to air efficiency, all, always almost same too, right? It's not very distinguishable, maybe less than a percentage difference here, what we shown here. So this shows that irrespective of what motor or, or controller you're using, if the blade is same, blade size is same, then you will not be able to see the difference in uh, fan curve or efficiency. So this data is for one particular speed line, but we this is the statement we have given is also applicable for other constant speed line across this uh, fan curve. Other speed lines, constant speed lines as well. Now the second uh, results is Let's see what happens if you use a same motor controller, but if you change the blade design and same size of the blade. So here, a different impeller, same size, different impeller means different uh, types of design. And we used identical motor and controller. And here also the same fan curve we are showing. Now we can see the distinguishable data here for a given speed line, fan system three behaving little uh, lower than fan system four, which is also shown in the efficiency. So if you see that fan system four as a more efficient compared to the fan system three. Now this clearly indicates that the impeller design is the main driving force for efficiency. Now this is also applicable for different speed lines too. Now, this is this third data we are showing across the system line. Previously, along the constant speed line, now the third data is along the system line. So this is the system line we tested, and this is the static system efficiency, or in other words, wire to air efficiency of the given fan system. Now we are broke down the individual component efficiency, the impeller static efficiency along the system line is almost a constant, which is 68 percentage. Motor efficiency varies parabolically and also controller efficiency also varies here. Now, if you see that the efficiency, the maximum efficiency for the impeller is 68 percentage. For the motor, the maximum is around 92 percentage. Controller, it may reach close to 97, 98, depending upon uh, load like high uh, full load or offload conditions. Now, what what we are in, in, uh, uh, inferring from this graph is, irrespective of what is the motor efficiency, controller efficiency, let us assume we can improve motor and controller to 100 percentage. We are still end up with the 68 percentage because the impeller efficiency is a constant across the system line. So we cannot go more than 68 percentage even if you have a, a full efficient motor and controller system now if you're able to improve impeller higher then we can able to improve this system uh, static system or wire air efficiency higher but this particular system we cannot go beyond this this curve actually because of this impeller is the limiting factor so so our conclusion here is impeller efficiency is the primary factor. And if 
the fan system or air handler or any HVAC equipments operating at the full load conditions. So impeller is again the main driver of the overall wet air efficiency. Now, sometimes our, we need to operate our HVAC equipments in the offload conditions, let's say 40 to 50 percentage and below conditions sometimes. In that conditions, the impeller, motor and controller needs to be improved. If it is operating on mostly at full load, then impeller needs to be improved. Otherwise, we'll not get any improvement in the overall system. And this is applicable for um, other system as well as as well. For example, VAV system, but we have to get the correct data for that. But this is applicable for VAV system as well. Now we compare the two different system, right? System one and system two. Uh, the, we, we tested same system line, system line one and two. The white air efficiency almost a constant, similar to the constant speed line. If you're able to recall the data from uh, results one. Impeller static is same because we use the same impeller. But here the motor and controller, we are little different. So the motor system one is the VST control direct drive fan system, motor system. And motor system two is ECM, uh, integrated ECM motor. But the impeller is almost con almost same because it has the same impeller design. So overall, we are seeing similar behavior compared to the constant speed line. The system line also giving the same data. So what is showing is irrespective of whatever um, motor or controller we are using, if the impeller is constant, then along the system line, similar to the, along these speed line, impeller is a main driving factor to white air efficiency. Without addressing the impeller, we cannot be able to improve the white air efficiency if the system operating full load or close to full load. If it is off load conditions, maybe less than 50 percentage, then we have to concentrate motor and controller along with the impeller to improve the overall uh, efficiency of the system. So, and also you remember that when the system uh, line, when you test that close to the system, the power also reduces when you try to operate at the low uh, load conditions, which is in the form of cube. Uh, speed cube, cube of the speed like so the main conclusion from our study is there's a two load condition if it, the system operates at the full load condition or design conditions improving impeller efficiency should be the main focus to improve the uh, white air efficiency which will have a great greatest impact on the white air efficiency if the system operates spot load conditions in the then we should focus on improving impeller motor controller to get the increased improving white air efficiency so that's main conclusion for this study now there are to improve the fan selection so for example if you want to get the greatest return for the end users or consumers to improve the efficiency or reduce the cost, then this is a three way we can able to address. The, the greatest return able the end user can able to get is the air distribution system by having least amount of losses. For example, duct design, uh, different types of duct design so that they can have a static require, static pressure is lower for a given CFM. If we able to do that, that will give us more return. But as a, a manufacturer, sometimes it is not possible from our, our end. So we can able to focus on two and three. This, this number two was the most efficient fan uh, selection for this particular application. The most efficient fan selection means uh, better fan uh, impeller selection along with the motor and controller uh, selection for given applications. And third option is 
uh, premium efficiency motors and controllers, not focusing on impeller, which is the least option or least uh, returns for the end users, which will improve the efficiency. With that, I'm going to give to uh, Brandon, so he'll take over from here. All right, thank you, Raja. Yeah, so with this information in mind, you know, uh, the question is how can we take this and better assist our customers in making intelligent decisions uh, when it comes to selecting the, the blower for their airflow application? Uh, better understand this, we are, we're going to want to look into some fan efficiency metrics. So the traditional method of presenting a fan efficiency was by using the fan efficiency grade or the FEG. Uh, now, the problem with this is it only gives you the peak static efficiency of the impeller. Uh, so it completely ignores all the other losses that you could see uh, due to mechanical losses, uh, motor losses, or controller losses. Uh, and if you look at the percentages there, that can equate to a pretty substantial percentage of loss that's being completely ignored. Uh, and this can be evaluated at the peak efficiency as well. So the new method for establishing efficiency by uh, AMCA 208 is actually the fan energy index. Uh, so this is more of a true indicator of the wire to air efficiency. Uh, so not only does this take into consideration the losses, uh, uh, the losses of the impeller, the mechanical losses, motor loss, and controller loss, but this also considers the actual operating point that the system is that the system is running at. Uh, so it takes into account the the CFM uh, and static pressure as well. You know, so implications for fan selection, there's a growing interest in the HVAC industry to move towards more efficient fan and motor systems. Uh, as laid out in ASHRAE 90.1, this standard actually now requires an FEI of 1.0 or higher. Uh, ASHRAE 189.1 takes us a step further and requires an FEI of 1.1 or higher. Uh, and one thing I also want to note is the, the FEI actually looks at that input power that Raj was covering in the beginning, so the fan electrical power uh, of a reference fan at that operating point divided by the fan electrical power of the actual fan that we're, that we're testing that against. So how do we derive this? Uh, so AMCA 210 is the standard for uh, airflow testing. Uh, so for an AC motor with a VFD, uh, we could actually measure the impeller shaft brake horsepower. And then using this, we would have one of three ways in order to calculate the fan electrical power from the brake horsepower uh, by AMCA 208, which is that FEI standard. Uh, we could use the default, default motor and controller losses just from a lookup table. Uh, AMCA 207 is the standard that covers the fan electrical power, uh, so we can actually calculate this brake horsepower from regulated motors. Uh, or we can actually employ AMCA 210 uh, and test the drive components directly. Uh, so using one of these methods, we would then derive the, the actual FEP. Uh, for a motorized impeller, the process is a lot simpler. We can actually test the wire to air directly. Uh, so by doing so, we then derive the, the actual FEP while being able to, to skip that middle step. And uh, per ANCA 430, uh, all of our semi-custom units are actually required to have the FEP listed in the performance reports. And then taking this actual FEP, uh, we can get the FEI. And as I said, it's the FEP of a reference fan divided by the FEP of the actual fan. Uh, and this does take into consideration the actual fan operating points so the airflow and, uh, and pressure is plugged into there as well. Okay, uh, so which technology is most efficient? Uh, as the paper covered, it looks like EC technology may not be the, the most efficient as it was originally reported. Um, Yeah, so this information in mind, you know, why EC motors, um, you know, what's the point if we can get an AC motor, it's less expensive, why wouldn't we just go that route? Uh, so EC motors still have a lot of benefits to them uh, that, that can't be ignored, one of them namely being the uh, reduced footprint. EC motors tend to be significantly smaller than their than their uh, AC motor counterparts, um, so you, you could have significant cost savings there just in length. Uh, serviceability, each EC motor has its own integrated controller. Uh, so if one of these fans was to go down, you could just pop that fan out um, put a new one in or even a blank off plate and you can start the system right back up uh, or you may not even have to shut the system down at all. Uh, and then also control and redundancy. With each one of these having an integrated controller, 
you know, run into the issue where if you have a, a fan array that's being controlled by a single VFD, if that VFD goes down, the entire array goes down. Um, that can be pretty detrimental in some scenarios. Uh, for example, you know, with the recent pandemic, the need to keep uh, hospital rooms uh, depressurized, you know, if a fan system goes down, they can no longer do that. Um, so EC motors do have a benefit there as well. So this is just a case study on the efficiency. Uh, we considered a 10,000 CFM system at four inches of static. And so this is just showing the, the, uh, the length savings for each system. Uh, going from left to right, if we look at the single DDP, uh, this one would require a 45 inch fan, uh, fan, fan segment, excuse me. Uh, whereas if we look at single motorized impeller, it would only require 37 inches of, of, of length in the fan segment. Uh, so already a savings of eight inches. Now, if we look at their uh, array counterparts, which are already inherently shorter in length, uh, if we go to the two by two stack fan, that would require 37 inches of length. So the same as the single motorized impeller. Uh, or if we look at the two by two motorized impeller, this only requires 25 inches of length. Uh, so if we look at the, you know, the two extremes from the left, the single DDP requiring 45 inches versus the two by two motorized impeller only requiring 25, that's a savings of 20 inches. I mean, it's, it's a lot of sheet metal. So. Okay, uh, so a lot of information here, so we're just gonna walk through from uh, left to right. Uh, so for the single DDP, we consider a 27 inch uh, diameter impeller. Uh, if we look at the FEP for this system, it was 7.6 and that, that would be in kilowatts. Uh, so the wired air efficiency for this system was 62% and the FEI was 1.32. Uh, so one thing to note, this would be acceptable per, uh, per ASHRAE 90.1 and 189.1. Uh, but again, this comes at the cost of the, the fan segment length being 45 inches. Uh, now, typically we see these as being the, the least, expensive, uh, least expensive of the four options, that are, or I'm sorry, yeah, the four options that are listed here. Uh, now, if we look at the single ECM, this was a 27.9 uh, inch diameter impeller. This one was actually slightly less efficient than the single DDP counterpart. Um, so this one was at 61% wire to air efficiency, which translates to an FEI of 1.31. Uh, the fan segment length for this one, again, was 37 inches, uh, so it's a little more compact. Uh, these tend to be slightly more expensive, uh, but again, you also get that, that length savings as well. Uh, so the one thing I really want to point out here is you have a single DDP system, so an AC motor with BFD uh, and a single ECM, and in this, at this operating point, uh, the single DDP is actually more efficient than the ECM. Uh, now, if we look at the, the four stack fans, we considered a 15-inch impeller. Um, the wired air efficiency for these, where 53, the wired air efficiency was 53%, whereas the FEI was 1.14, uh, and this could fit in a 37 inch uh, fan segment. Uh, because you have four fans, this tends to be a little more expensive, uh, especially compared to the single DDP or the single ECM. Uh, now, if we look at the four ECM fans, uh, this one was a 15.7 inch diameter impeller. Uh, the wired air efficiency for this system was 60, or I'm sorry, 56%, uh, which translates to an FEI of 1.20. Uh, but you can fit this one in a 25 inch cabinet, uh, but it also comes to that, uh, that additional cost. Um, so one thing I wanna point out here is we can see for this array system, the ECM fan is actually slightly more efficient uh, than the stack fans. Uh, and now we mentioned in the beginning, if you could have a 5% improvement in your system, how much you could save over the years, uh, if you look at the four ECM fans, or I'm sorry, if you, if you look at the four stack fans, uh, that is wired air efficiency of 53%, whereas if you look at the single DDP, uh, that's 62%. So that's almost 10% difference right there. So, I mean, you can double that, that calculation that was done in the beginning. You'd be saving a little over $400 uh, every year. Um, so the main takeaways here, so a single larger fan is usually the most efficient selection. Uh, again, so you're looking at 62 or 61% versus 53 or 56%. Uh, fan arrays provide a reduced footprint, but with slightly lower efficiency. Uh, so there's a bit of a trade-off there. And then ECM fans are typically shorter than their direct drive counterparts. Uh, so what this is really driving home is, you know, there, there are a lot of factors to consider when you're selecting the, the fan for your particular application. Uh, it may not just be efficiency, uh, you know, somebody may think, oh, by going with an ECM fan, I'm getting a more efficient system. Uh, so they're going to pay, you know, they're going to pay a lot more. Whereas if they just go with a single DDP, they can get the same efficiency or even greater at lower cost. 
Uh, and then also translating this to a carbon footprint. Uh, if we look at the systems again, uh, from left to right, tons of CO2, the single DDP would only generate about 14.4 uh, tons of CO2, where if we look at the single ECM, 14.5, and again, that had to do with that 1% that difference in the efficiency, uh, but we really start to see a hike when we move to the four stack band, which is about 16.7, uh, and then four ECMs, which is about 15.8. Uh, so that's about 2.3 tons difference between the, the lower end versus the higher end. And that's, that's pretty significant. I mean, if we look at the, the carbon footprint savings in terms of miles driven, if you look at the single DDP versus the four stack fans, you know, that savings in tons of CO2 translates to, you know, over 9,000 miles driven or in the single ECM case, uh, over 8,000 miles driven. Uh, and then we see the lower, lower savings for the four ECMs, which is a little over 3,000 miles driven. Um, but yeah, so once again, the 10% improved efficiency is highly feasible. Uh, and as I mentioned before, there are a lot of factors that you have to consider when designing your system. Uh, and another thing I want to point out, you can also see the, the annual cost to operate there. Um, so again, you know, 3468 uh, 3, versus 4011 So right there, you're saving, you know, a little over $500. Um, so yeah, so, so the savings can be pretty substantial. <laughs> yeah, so again, so the, so the main takeaway from the paper is fan selection combined with system design best practices that limit losses while profound effect on the energy use of the air system. Uh, so as Raja covered earlier, you know, in terms of the greatest returns uh, in order, you're first gonna wanna design an air distribution system with least amount of losses. Uh, lower static pressure that it's gonna have to overcome, the lower RPM that the fan can run at, uh, it'll, it'll significantly reduce the power consumption while also running quieter. Uh, you're then gonna wanna select the most efficient fan for the application. By fan, we're really focused on the impeller efficiency here. Uh, since as was driven home earlier, the, effic the efficiency of the impeller is what's really driving the efficiency of the overall system. And then number three, provide premium efficiency motors and controllers. Um, but again, ECM does not always provide improved fan system efficiency. Um, and at even below that 50% operation point, uh, the motor, controller, and impeller, they're, they're, all, they're all contributing equally to the overall, overall static efficiency. But once you get past that point, again, it's still the impeller that's driving it. Okay, and at this point, we'll open it up to questions. Yep, and just a reminder, there is a Q and A uh, chat on the on your screen that you can enter questions. We do have a few questions that came in. I'll I'll start us off. So the, the first one was, what are the energy costs of upgrading to a MERV 13 or HEPA filter to meet ASHRAE recommendations? Um, this is certainly a good question. Um, it it will depend heavily on what your starting point is, you know, where you are on the fan curve, what type of fan uh, you're using, and and if the fan can even uh, fan and motor can actually provide enough uh, power for the increased static pressure. Um, I would I would approach this from a case by case perspective. So look at what's the increased total static, uh, rerun my fan curve, and do the the A to B comparison at least at the design condition. Um, and you know, really, that brake horsepower increase, if we're looking at it that way, is going to cascade to your energy use or energy draw. So if it's a one percent increase in brake horsepower, you could expect approximately a one percent increase um, in, in the uh, electrical power draw. Uh, this next question probably be more geared for Brandon to answer. Uh, cost difference between EC fans or DD uh, plenum or direct drive plenum fans. We touched on that a little bit, but Brandon, if you could uh, expand on that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so typically we'll see that the ECM fans tend to be a little more expensive. Um, but in this case, if we were to look at a single ECM and a single DDP, uh, after you factor in the cost of the DFD for the single DDP, EP, it, it would even it would actually come a little close to the cost of a single ECM, uh, but I'd say generally though the ECMs do tend to be a little more expensive. And, that, and and again, that would also go for the four stack fans. That would depend on whether or not you have a single VFD that's driving the entire system, uh, or if you have a VFD per fan. That would that would highly determine the overall cost. Okay, and the. Uh, next question here is FEI a prescriptive requirement of 
and is the requirement first appear in the 2019 edition? Um, I, I believe it, it is, uh, re so it's replacing the minimum, or I should say maximum brake horsepower requirements in 90.1. I'm not sure if it's the 2019 version or a more recent version where it first first appeared, but uh, I, I know it was being evaluated um, in the 2019 timeframe. So it, it, it's certainly in there in the most recent edition. So we got a couple more questions here. Let me read through them one moment. Uh, yeah, so this is a good question. How much of the savings from choosing a single DDP fan are offset by the cost of the longer cabinet? Um, I don't know, uh, Brandon, maybe you'd be, be able to answer that. Oh yeah, can we go back to the yeah the table? Okay, there. So the question is, how much? Can you can you repeat the question? How much do the savings from choosing a single DDP fan offset the cost of the longer cabinet? Um, yeah, I'd have to look at. It. I'd say it's more of a, a case by case study. Um, but I'd say in this case, um, what I mentioned earlier too, once you factor in the cost of that VFD, uh, the prices are pretty comparable. Uh, so at that point, there may not be a significant significant savings. Yeah, and I I think the the primary uh, cost item in the fan segment is the fan and motor, <laughs> um, compared to the cost of the sheet metal and, and cabinet. Uh, so this is an, an interesting one. I'll, I'll, I'll try and answer it. Uh, since total cost of ownership is important, service and replacement are important. What is the average life of the ECM motor versus the uh, AC motor with VFD? Um, I think generally the, the, there's limited data that we have anyways on life, lifespan of a ECM or a in motorized impeller. Um, but I think for most motors, right, the failure point's gonna be the bearings. Uh, so generally speaking, I, I think an ECM would have similar life expectancy of an AC motor, especially if we rule out um, electrical components that could be replaced. But good question. Uh, Here's another question that I think I can answer. Um, oh, I'm sorry. What's the material cost of ECM versus non-ECM taking into account the carbon footprint calculation? Or was it just the operation operating the fans? Um, so I think that's on this slide, right? The, the cost to operate is only looking at the electrical power. Uh, the power draw and uh, and some assumptions on how much energy it'll use annually. Um, I, I do have a question here, for, probably for Brandon. Uh, how should I use FEI? Should I specify using the highest FEI possible? What's the best approach? So for that, I would say uh, because FEI takes into account the operating point, uh, so long as you're above that that 1.0 as per ASH rate 90.1, uh, that that pretty much indicates that that fan is a is a good efficient selection for that operating point. Uh, it may even have a lower wire to air efficiency, uh, but because we're considering uh, the operating point, it could still be an efficient fan uh, at that point. And, that, and a lot of that too has to do with the RPM of the fan. Because uh, if you can operate it lower at that point, even if the wire to air is lower, you're still consuming a lot less power. Right, and, and actually there was a comment here that came in and uh, thank you for clarifying. So FEI showed up in 90.1 in a 2016 addendum and that was fully included in the 2019 version. So that's correct. 
Uh, here's a question. If, if the FVI rating includes the VFD for a single fan installation, how is the rating affected if VFD is different than one tested for the FVI rating? Um, I, I think the answer is kind of in the blue box that we have, the light blue box here. Um, right, doing the FVP calculation requires some assumptions on on the VFD that'll be used. So if we don't know how the VFDs will be used for say a fan array, there has to be some assumptions that are built into the calculation. Um, if we do know what the VFD is, then we can certainly use uh, either measured uh, efficiencies or again, calculating it from uh, the assumptions that are in the AMCA 207 calculation. Um, so here's a question maybe for, for Raja. Um, what impact will the belt drive system have on wired air efficiency? Or, yeah, so as we said, the fan system, uh, the belt driven system, we have additional components, uh, uh, the belt and the pulleys and sieves. So it is depending upon the application. Most of the time, it will be comparable to ECM and the direct drive fan system, or it will be a little lower because of these two components uh, losses will be there. So if you see that the graph I have shown the initially, it will be around five to ten percentage lower depending upon where it's operating. Right. Uh, I'll see that graph. Probably I'll go back. Yeah, here. Yeah. So this this two two components like bearing and pulley and belt losses, it account for five to ten percentage, depending upon the operating points. So it will be comparable or very little lower than the ECM and direct drive counterpart. And uh, I think this is the last question, uh, assuming I didn't miss any. Has, has the operating and cost uh, operating cost taken into effect uh, with the ECM controller motor uh, heat given off inside the system versus a VFD drive where the heat is given off outside the system? So, um, uh, you know, what's the, I guess, the net effect from a cooling capacity standpoint? Um, I, Raja, do you want to respond to that? Uh -huh. Can you repeat so, that one more, please? Yeah. So, so the question is, with the EC, uh, with the ECM, where the controller is inside the airstream, uh, yes. certainly the the efficiency and the heat loss is now contributing to the uh, heat into the airstream that we're trying to cool or condition. Uh, how does that compare to, say, a VFD where the VFD is mounted external to the airstream, so that heat is not uh, contributing or, or detrimental to the cooling of the unit. I I, I think uh, irrespective of where where you're locating the controller, the controller losses will be there. So, but it might be five percentage to fifteen, depending upon where it is. Like for for example, the controller in the airstream the losses will be a little lower because uh, it has a better cooling. And uh, as we seen our data, controller are almost reaching uh, 90 to 100 percentage in the full operating points. And uh, so it will not have that much difference between the two controller. Even ECM controller reaches close to 90 and above for right. the efficiency. So I, I think, right, to reiterate, the, the energy that's being put into the airstream from the controller loss in the form of heat is very low um, yeah. compared yeah. to the, the energy that's in the air um, and, and how much uh, is being cooled. So it's a very small amount, um, when probably not very measurable uh, for most systems. 
Okay, so that we'll wrap up the questions there. Um, we'll we'll also try to um, go through all the questions and and put together an FAQ that we can send out um, at a later date. Um, but that concludes our webinar today. Thank you to Rajavel and Brandon for presenting. Uh, just as a reminder, we will send out a, re a recording of the session. We'll make that available in the near future. Uh, and thank you again for attending. Have a great day.